Hi again. So uh, this little video, I want in this little video, I want to talk about uh, technique of felting. It's uh, I'm not going to cover everything, but just some basic things which you have to understand before you're going to take some workshop, uh, my class, or read something I don't know about it. Uh, just to have just a general understanding what's it all about. Okay. So, let's say we're going to make a scarf, and um, this is 100% Miri Noble scarf, very pretty, it's kind of two-sided with like some, some cool decor inside, it's a little bit glittery, it has a certain length, it has a certain width, and um, shape and stuff like that. Um, what are we going to start with? First of all, we have to decide on the style, on the colors, on what we want to do, what kind of wool we're going to use, materials and stuff like that. Let's say we made a list, we decided what we want. Next step, we need our supply and we need our working space. Um, in this case, our supply will be 19 micron super fine merino and uh, different little fibers for, to decorate. And um, this scarf actually is special for me because um, I just got my wool carder and made my own blend. And I blended it with a little bit of a silk and a little bit of viscose, and it has a little kind of touch of sheer and also I um, spinned yarn from the same fiber and if you can see I attached this yarn in the middle and it made it all like little like a decor which I think is super cool and I'm very proud of my first attempt <laughs> to spin my own yarn <laughs> anyway so then we have to do some calculation um uh, every item which we're going to make from uh from the fiber will shrink and all you have to understand from the beginning one simple rule wool shrinks this way wool shrinks along the the hair shrinks along its length what happens after it attaches the next hair next to it and we start agitated more and more it just from the one long line turn into a zigzag so if you had a one long line at one point and you agitated and it just turned into a zigzag you know so from this length it made that so how to do all these calculations and how do we know how much and stuff like that it's getting a little bit complicated, uh, but more you practice and more you learn, more you learn, you start figuring it out. For example, I figured it out at one point that um, to get a good quality felt, I need to have, uh, let's say it's, I don't want to talk about nano felting, which we have put like wool and uh, on the piece of silk or like we have like not 100% of wool let's say much less uh, I'm talking about like traditional felt when we have like fine wool and we lay it out and we wanted to shrink it I will say that averagely uh, on an average and my average coefficient should be, be between 1.3 to maybe 1.8 depends on what I'm doing and depends on what I wanted to achieve. Some people count it by percentage. Uh, I explain everything at my classes because it's confusing for some people how to calculate from 100% to 130. We don't uh, multiply in 1.3. It's a little bit different way. <laughs> so anyway, I go by coefficient. 
Uh, and um, I know that one point, let's say five, somewhere in the middle, it's really good quality felt. It's not falling apart, it's not going away, it's nothing will happen to it and blah, blah, blah. But it also depends on the wool, because of course, more fine wool shrinks better and thicker wool, it flies. Sometimes I don't use Mirin all the time. I work with Blueface or like Masham. Or all these fibers felt pretty nicely, alpaca, and they have a different shrinkage percentage. And it also depends what I'm working on, okay? So like in case of a traditional piece, like let's say the scarf like that, I will be planning shrinkage about like 1.5 coefficient. So let's say if I have 10 inches of dry wool after I wet it, walk on it, agitate it and shrink it, it will shrink. Uh, <laughs> I have to uh, divide 10 by 1.5, okay? So, uh, so it means to get, let's say, let's go opposite direction, to get 10% uh, 10 inch length piece of scarf, I need it to be 10, okay, I need it to be 10 inches. This is my final product. Then I need to lay this wool 15 inches long, okay? My coefficient is 1.5. Now, it depends on the project. It all depends on, but just a general idea. How do you do calculations? Also, now it's getting even more complicated because like we say, the wool shrinks this way. If I lay all my wool in one direction, Sometimes I do. It depends what I'm working on. Sometimes this is the this is the whole point. It shrinks really good. It shrinks probably up to twice or even three times. It can be really more. You shrink it more dense, more more dense your fabric will be. You don't want to under shrink because you don't want it to fall apart. You don't want to over shrink because be careful. Sometimes when you do the head, you over shrink it and you can't really put it on your head. So it's pretty difficult to pull it, to, 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 to stretch it away, to stretch it out later. So everything can be planned very well ahead of time. And you know, you have to know your press, your process step by step. So what's next? Next is, uh, let's say I made all my calculations. Ah, okay. What I want to say that here's a secret. We cannot lay all our pieces one direction because wool is simply not stable, the fab, uh, felt is not really stable when we lay it all one direction. And it depends on, depends on what you're doing, depends what your goals and projects, you want it to be thin and uh, transparent. There is like lots of like a web, like a web style um, items people like to do, <coughs> cover, they call it, when, you, when they when you talk, they piece and literally, they just separate it like that and separate it and pull it and pull it and pull it until it turns like super thin and then they felt it and it all shrinks one direction. But no, most of the time we lay wool in different directions. Well, depends what you're doing. So let's say if you have it crisscross lay, uh, it's a most stable felt. It's not going anywhere. It's it's not you. It, it's impossible to stretch, but it will probably never fall apart with you from you. So it, if you're making a purse, for example, we are going to use every day, you will want it to use this this uh, this technique laying wool this way. If you want something a little bit more stretchy and a little bit a little bit more working on then you use all kind of you you lay you will all kind of ways so i'm not going to show you everything i'm just giving you some ideas so okay now what are we doing when we're talking about laying the wool laying the wool 
means you hold your hand like that, you pull your left, and you drop this thing on, on the surface. If you're thinking seriously about becoming a felt maker, you have to practice and practice and practice trying to make it perfectly even and perfectly under control because it's not it's not easy you know so let's say if you i do this i control it pretty well and it turns pretty evenly so i i align it on this one direction now i want to make 90 degrees so i'll be doing the same this way it will be pretty stable felt well let's say you want um uh, you don't want your felt to be too stable you want to be just a little bit more stretchy or you want it to be able to stretch it like for example when you do mittens your fingers goes like go like that or um in your shoulders you know sometimes you want to feel some little bit of a movement and you can manipulate your wool and prepare and uh, make your fabric a little bit little bit more stretchy not much more for much more stretchy fabric it's a whole another whole another theory about it but uh this is why we can lay wool uh, in a different direction so for example if i lay uh roll by roll like 45 degree angle uh one way and then i turn around and make it 45 degree angle this way then uh all my fabric which i eventually get after i <clears throat> wet and shrink it it will be a little bit different quality for example you wanted to move, pull something out like a hat how you want to make a three-dimensional object then we are laying our wool in a circle you know and we can lay our wool uh, around you know or for example we want to make um, some ruffles like that then we will um, lay our wool uh, like a sun rays you know directions like a flower directions you know from the middle so this is, is a whole different um, knowledge <laughs> you have to know how to lay your wool but this is when we're talking about professional felt makers this is what we do you know this is how we try to achieve different effects and get different types of materials you know um what i else i wanted to talk about in this video is about your surface i like to use uh, it should be a little bit uh has a little bumps here uh this one i got in ikea uh, they use it uh, like a placemat for for the, for your covers or for your drawers. Uh, people use bubble wraps. People use uh, materials that they do for color swimming pools. Just because all these little bumps here, it uh, help us to agitate the wool when it comes to felt and felting and shrinking or pulling. Some people call it pulling. So uh, I have a whole video about different tools. But as far as your environment, uh, check about moisture in your room because wool is a sensitive thing. You don't want wool to too dry. You want, do, not, do not want it too much uh, water in there uh, area. Uh, if, it's, if I feel the water is too dry, I have a sprinkle. I just dry that on myself. Uh, you want to wear something very comfortable because you will be on your feet most of the time. My table has is raised so I don't have to bend all the time uh, because I keep up my back. Um, um, also um, laying the wool uh, nicely and evenly it's uh, quite a skill so you have to practice on that if you're going to take like a say felting a little bit more serious um again about materials i have another video you can watch but about your environment what else i prefer and i suggest to wear simple clothes like a cotton because uh 
the static which we have in the air we also carry it on ourselves if you're working with very fine um, fibers like silk lots of times it attaches to your fingers or to your nails so you need to have gloves for that purpose and uh, that's probably it for this video so you want to watch the other one about the different tools but like I say when you're ready to take classes or to read some tutorials I think that several videos I just made like for my felting with Marika uh, channel uh, will be very helpful for you thanks for watching bye